Hello everyone, welcome to the InfoSec Train. My name is Ayush and I will be your instructor for this entire session. In this particular session, we are going to discuss interview question specifically on AWS. I am not only going to discuss question answer, but also I will explain the concept so that you don't have to cram these answer. If you learn the concept, then you can easily address interview question and as well as you can structure your own answer. Explain AWS and mention its component. So AWS is also known as Amazon Web Service. It is the leading cloud computing platform in the market. It offers reliable, scalable, and affordable cloud computing services to individuals, company, and organization. It follows a pay-as-you-go pricing model. So you have to pay only for the services which you are using. And now there are like many components of AWS, but the main components are, first one is, Computational service. It is a generic term used to reference processing power, memory, networking, storage, and other resources required for the computational success of any program. For example, applications that run machine learning algorithms require many gigs of RAM and multiple CPU to run successfully. In this case, CPU, RAM, graphic processing unit required will be called as compute resources and the application would be compute intensive application. So for compute services, we are having EC2, light sail, ECS, and elastic beanstalk. Now, second component is serverless computing. Serverless computing allows you to build and run application and services without thinking about servers. With serverless computing, your application is still run on server, but all the servers are managed by AWS. Examples are Lambda, API Gateway, DynamoDB, Fargate. Now, third thing we are having is Amazon Cluster. It is a logical grouping of tasks or services. Your tasks and services are run on infrastructure that is registered to a cluster. An example is ECS cluster. And if you talk about storage services, then storage services is the best factor of using public cloud to store resources and your data and using storage services, you can store your data efficiently with lower prices. And examples are S3, simple storage service. We have Glacier, we have EFS, we have EBS, we have storage gateway. Now, if you talk about database services, database services is a cloud computing managed services offering that provides access to a database without requiring the setup of physical hardware, the installation of software, or need to configure the database. An example are MySQL, Postgre, Oracle. Now, what is management and security? So first of all, we will talk about management. Management and governance services are built to manage high dynamic cloud resources at massive scale. Best example is IAM and config. And if you talk about security, data protection, AWS provides services that helps you to protect your data account and workloads from unauthorized access. Now, if you talk about network, cloud networking is a type of IT infrastructure and organization network capabilities and resources are hosted in public or private cloud platform. And what is analytics? Analytics uses data and match to answer best answer for the questions, discover relationship, predict unknown outcomes and automate decision. And which services are used for analytics? Athena, Redshift, open source service. Now we have application services. Application services are software solution that improve the speeds, security and operability of application. And if you talk about mobile services, these are the purpose built tools and services for front end web and mobile developers, which make it easier to build apps with cloud functionality on AWS. So you can get to the market faster. And examples are AWS location service, Amplify, AppSync, and Pinpoint. Now moving on to the next question. Explain AMI and how is it related to the instance? AMI, an abbreviation of Amazon Machine Learning, contains fundamental information needed to launch an instance, and it is a copy of AMI operating in the cloud. And if you talk about AMI, is same as the image required in your PC to configure your OS, right? So now, if for example, you have bought a new laptop and you haven't installed any OS, before installing any OS, you need image, right? So in the AWS also, we need this image 
for installing operating system. So in AWS, we call it Amazon machine image. And this AMI allows you to download as many as instance as you want. You can launch as many as instance using AMI. And the instance type defines the hardware of the host computer. All the instances are different and offer abilities in computational and storage skills. Now, moving on to the next question, what does an AMI consist of? And AMI mainly consists of the following component. First one is template. That is the root volume for the AWS instance. And one or more Amazon EBS that is called Elastic Block Store Snapshot or four. And it can be like instance store backed AMI, right? So they can be like two type of template. And these are used for like, for example, an operating system for like an application server and applications. Now, second thing we're having is launch permission that control which AWS account can use the AMI to launch instance. So we can just permit the person or the organization or whatever it is, where we can launch AMI using permission and that person can only use that AMI. Now a block device mapping that specify the volumes to attach to the instance when it is lost, right? So when it is going to launch, then we are using a block device mapping to specify the volumes to attach to the instance. Now moving on to the next question. Mention the types of AMI offered by AWS. So there are like two kinds of AMI provided by AWS. First one EBS backed and second one is instance stored back. Now, first of all, if we talk about instance store, so instance store provide temporary block level storage for an instance. This storage is located on disk that are physically attached to the host computer. This CBS volume is network at attached drive, which results in slow performance, but data is persistent. Meaning if you reboot the instance data will be there. It is in a case of EBS. Now, if you talk about instance store, instance is an EC2 instance using an instance store as a root device volume created from a template stored in S3. And if we talk about EBS backed instance means that the root device for an instance not from the AMI is EBS volume, right? Now, instance store volume can be attached as additional volume only when the instance is being launched and cannot be attached once the instance is up and running while EBS volume can be attached as additional volumes when the instance is launched and even when the instance is up and running. Now, there are like some scenarios where data can be lost. So first we will take talk about data on instance store volume. Data will be lost when underlying disk drives fails or instance stop or instance is terminated or instance hibernate. So therefore, do, we do not, we can't rely on instance store for a long-term data. If we talk about EBS volume, so there is one condition when EBS data will be lost, when you have enabled termination flag. It means that when you have launched an instance and if you have enabled a flag, termination flag, then only your volume will be deleted. And data will not, lost in EBS when a reboot will happen, when you will stop the instance, right? Then data will be there. Now moving on to the next question. What is Amazon S3? Amazon S3 is also called a simple storage service and it is an object storage service that can be used to store and recover any amount of data from anywhere and anytime on the web. The first thing that we can notice here that is called less object. Why we call this object object storage service? The reason is that in S3, we are having two concepts that is bucket and object. Bucket is similar to disk or bucket is similar to drives or folders in which we are just storing our data. And object is like a file which we are storing. And file can be of any format that is PDF, PPT, right? So if you upload anything or any file of any extension, then it will be called as object. So that's why it is called as object storage. And you can store, you can recover any amount of data anywhere and anytime on the web. How can you do it? Because whenever you are going to upload any object, S3 will be providing you with the 
HTTP endpoints and using STD endpoints, you can recover any amount of data from anywhere in the world. And it provides the same access to developer of highly scalable, reliable, fast, in, inexpensive data storage infrastructure that are used by Amazon to run its global network of websites. And now moving on to the next question. Explain Glacier. See, Glacier is one of the most crucial service provided by AWS. It is an online web storage service that offers low cost and effective storage along with security feature for archive and data backup. You can use Glacier to store the information effectively for months, years, or even decades. So Glacier is recommended when you are following some compliances. Like if you are following HIPAA, US government instructed or just make a rule for medical staff or medical hospital or medical team that you should retain for at least five years the data of your patient. So for that purpose, you can use Glacier because you need to store data for a longer time and you can go for like Glacier instant retrieval if you want to retrieve it instantly uh, and it will also save your cost. And it is Glacier is used for these kind of purpose only when you want to store your data or information for decades. Now, next question is define EIP. Okay. So first of all, I will tell you before EIP, we are having two things that is public and private. Now, whenever you launch an instance, AWS will provide you two IPs that is public and private. Private will be there till you just terminate your instance. And public will be available when whenever you are just going to repute your instance or stop your instance after that you are going to start instance, then your public IP will be changed. The reason is that public IP is dynamic and is still, it is used for global communication. So I know it's, it will be very difficult for us. Like if our server IP is changing instantly, then it is very difficult for us to log in, right? Or for our customers to access. So what we do, we just ask or request AWS that please allocate us elastic IP. So when AWS will uh, allocate us elastic IP, then you can attach that elastic IP to your instance. So what elastic IP will do? Elastic IP will remain same till you just disallocate it. And using Elastic IP, you can use for global communication and it will not change like public IP address. And it is static IP before address, right? And if you want a static IP address for your instance, you must contact your AWS account with EIP to be correlated with the EIP. Now moving on to the next question, what is Redshift? Redshift is a big data product that is used at data warehouse in the cloud. It is fast, reliable, and robust product of a big data warehouse. So it is used for these kind of purpose only when we just need to store large amount of data for analytics purpose. Now moving on to the next question. That is how will you explain SNS? So team SNS stands for simple notification service that is web service provided by AWS. And it facilitates the management and delivery of message or notification to the user and clients from any cloud platform. Now team, what happens? Like if you, are, if you want to just create an alert in billing, like if you want to create a budget, so you can create a budget in AWS that my monthly or this month I'm having a budget of $5. So you can just create a budget of $5 and you can create an alert and whenever the, like you have 50% or 80% of data is, or whenever 80% of it like budget has been exhausted, then AWS will notify you. So for notification in that purpose, we are using SNS. And in SNS, we are having two type of clients that is subscriber and publisher. Our publisher job is to create and send message to the subscriber instance via the communication channel. And the subscriber receives the publisher's notification over one of the supported protocols such as SQS, HTTP, and Lambda. So these are not protocols, these are the services. How many IAM keys can a user have a, at a time? At a time, user can have only two active IAM access and secret access key. Thank you so much team. See you in next session.